The word restructuring has become quite popular in recent times. However, two things you must bear in mind when we examine this concept are devolution of power, political decentralization, and fiscal federalism. That is a differential economic model. It is no secret that we largely practice a unitary system of government, which does not suit the large um, and diverse nature of our country. The system places an inordinate amount of power on the central government, making the states and local governments very weak. A true federal system of government is one that divides the power between the national government, states, and local governments. The United States is a prime example of how a federal government system operates. The states in the U.S. are powerful enough that they can negotiate international trade deals with other countries as long as they do not clash with the interests of the U.S. government. The truth is that whoever tries to hold back or suppress calls for restructuring in Nigeria is simply delaying the inevitable. Nigeria is not working. Oil in its crude form is the mainstay of our economy. Our refineries are not functioning at full capacity at all. After nearly 60 years of independence, and discovery of oil in commercial quantity. We still import finished products from other oil producing countries such as Niger Republic. And, and, and given the onset of this worldwide pandemic, the price of oil is drastically reducing. I think it's about $10 per, per barrel now. That's how much it's selling. And we're really hardly selling any at all. Resource control has also been a thorny issue in the national discourse. The issue has given rise to insurgencies, especially in the Niger Delta, with the militants. And the fact that various states have been reduced to federal allocations, everyone has diminished their abilities to create their own indigenous wealth, apart from oil, and make their state economically viable. We need to understand that as a people, the cost of not restructuring far at least the cost of restructuring in these present times. However, what matters the most is that we restructure peaceably. I, I completely agree with Nafisa. I think Nigeria has to restructure or be doomed. There is no question about it. Okay. And it has to start, in my opinion, with the essence of federalism. Nigeria is a federal republic, but primarily only on paper. In the real sense of it, we are far from federal. And I think for Nigeria to try, we must build a system where a system that is competitive, where each state can aspire to anything, whether to wealth, whether to education, whether to industrial mm -hmm. development, whatever you can imagine, and where they can, where the state can drive one another in in a direction that that is de that is development. What we have right now is a guarantee from the center that no matter how incompetent your state is, no matter how unmotivated your governors, are, your, your your government is for each of these subnational systems you will still get something from the center. I do not think mm -hmm. that would help us as a country. I don't think that exactly. the world has thrived on people depending on a particular system. America practices the federal system of government. But what, what happens is that they actually do it in the real sense of it. Each state can move in a certain direction. Tax, taxes are not the same thing. Some laws on some of the most important issues in the world are not the same thing. But there are federal laws too. So mm. I think... I completely agree with Nafisa. Nigeria has to find a way to restructure, and we don't have to do too much. We already claim to be a federal republic. We just have to live true to the name now. Okay, um, Omodri, I just want to agree with you, but to say that I'm, I'm not sure anymore that that's enough, in the sense that I think uh, maybe it's through the years, we, so people have managed to poison the minds of people such that tribalism and yeah. all these, this, the vacuum of you know, true ideologies has seeped in. So people are now dealing with who is on my side, or the superficial appearance of who is on my side. Yeah. So in, in as much as you restructure, if that feeling of distrust and those false sentiments are still at play, they will still twist. After all, we adopted the American system and managed to corrupt it. So what you need is to do uh -huh. a, a, a you know, um, parallel, in, do you call it indoctrination now, where people get to realize that their value is not in their tribe or their religion so much as it is in being a human being. And if you have a fellow human being who is doing the right thing, then he's your brother. Something along those lines. Okay, I agree with you on that one, right? But I'm a very, very practical person. I am not going to depend on each. We have 200 million people, as we claim. I'm not going to depend on the morality and the sense of value of these people. I'd rather depend on the system. I depend on laws. I depend on policy to guide people in a certain direction. And then what yeah. I would do is provide the capability and the opportunities and the motivation for them to do the right thing. 
But I'm sorry, I'm not going to trust that people are just going to develop a sense of value that says it's not about tribalism, it's not about ethnicity. No, that's why I said because, a concurrence a side but, by side, but, you know. But go ahead. Yeah. What, 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 what now happens when the system is corrupt, when the system is already messed up, when the system is has been fashioned in a way that it only benefits negative people who don't have you know, who don't have the interest of the country at heart. Systems you know, are designed, rather, right? I, I know. I'd rather, I'd rather we aim to get people who are qualified in mm. certain positions to make decisions. People who are qualified, trust me, already, you will know their mindset. Their mindset, their state of mind, their mindset is different from, you know, being tribalistic or looking for loyalists and things. People who are qualified for positions actually worked to get there. Systems like, make people like, who are qualified get to those systems. That's the, that's the know, issue. We, uh, well, to get now, people who are qualified, we need to build the system that, for them to get there. Okay, which no, comes no, first? For, what I'm trying, to, what I'm trying to say is, yeah. Hmm. What? Which, what I said, which to, comes first? What I'm chicken or the egg? What, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, yeah, for you to go through school, yes, to read, study a course and but, and get your um, certificates for it. You've been through. You've been through the process. You understand. There's a difference with that man or woman being in a position to make decisions. There's a difference between that man and somebody who is put in that position out of favor of being a loyalist to somebody. Okay, you understand. Nafisa, Nafisa so that's what I mean, to... and that's how they will work with the system and you know restructure the system in a way that it now starts to work how it's meant to work. Okay, now, Fisa, okay. I, don't know if I, 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 I just sense. want to chip in. Yeah. I just want to chip in. So, um, like, I'm going to say a very funny story, short, very funny story. So, a couple, like a week ago, I made this tweet out on Twitter about restructuring and President Buhari in the same sentence. And oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I didn't sleep. <laughs> so, I didn't sleep. I saw all manners mm -hmm. of insults, insulting me, insulting themselves, insulting everybody, insult, insulting, they insulted everything under the sun. You know, it was just, it was, it wasn't funny, but it was very enlightening to see the mindset, perspective of different people about the world restructuring, because it's obvious that a lot, a lot of people have very different interpretations of what it means. Someone said, hey, if you restructure it, is it going to be for us? Can we trust these people? All those sorts of things. I think there needs to be a mass awareness about what it really means for our own individual um, particular for our own particular system. Not as it is, not a broad definition, not a broad spectrum, but as it is. And in my script, I was going to talk about devolution of power and physical federalism because those I think are the two most important things that when it comes to restructuring Nigeria that we oh, have sorry, to Sorry, we, we're out of time and would, I wanted to hear what Bright had to say. Bright, try and sneak it in on the next, on the next segment. <laughs> okay. Oh. Some might say Nafisa speaks the mind of the people. What's your mind? This is where you speak up. Concerning last week's edition, Simeon B exclaims, no social distancing in the studio. Simeon, apologies. We overestimated the distance between us. Your observation is noted. Whereas Keep Your Essence says, share to the diaspora. Thanks, Keep Your Essence. We push our content as far as we can. Kindly help by sharing and spreading the word. The debate continues on the foreign versus traditional gods. Lawrence Ndam says, it's not religion that's the problem in Nigeria. The government is the problem. We need to know our citizens. Whereas Akinyele Jones says, in Europe, only old people go to church. Here, youth don't go to church or worship any religion. My wife is an Italian woman. None of her family have a Bible at home. Christianity is a scam. Hmm. Each to their own, I guess, Akinyele. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, plus TV Africa. After the break, Rugged Man steps up to the plate. We move. <laughs>